I set out in search of the best 3D printable repair tools online. We're going to see what's useful, what's rubbish, and see if they can actually help us repair a phone. This 3D printer arrived yesterday. I'm hoping it'll allow me to fabricate custom parts for some upcoming projects. It was apparent I needed some way of fabricating pieces when I faced a missing hard drive bracket in a previous video. I'm looking forward to finally creating some of the custom devices I've dreamed of making for years. As a first project and a bit of an experiment, I want to see if 3D printed tools can hold up and provide any use in the real world. I started with some consumables, sponges, picks, that sort of thing. When the tips wear down, they become less effective. A blunt spudger will make it hard to unplug flex cables, increasing the risk of damage to the connector and surrounding components. Could a 3D printed tool be a quick replacement, avoiding the need to wait several days for one to arrive in the mail? I printed this piece in PET-G, a strong and flexible filament, likely more suited than PLA plastic. I only had white filament, so you'll have to excuse the exposure. It does look like a spudger, although it wasn't a perfect print. The first layer is separating, but does it still work as a spudger? We'll put it to the test later. For now, it's on to the next item. I tried some clamps, a somewhat universal tool of which I use for keeping pressure on a screen or back panel when using liquid adhesive. A clamp stops it moving around and ensures a firm connection while the glue cures. These turned out great. I'll leave a link to each print file in the description in case you want to try any of these prints out for yourself. It prints in several pieces, so you'll need to assemble them. The left-handed thread caught me off guard, but after reading the assembly instructions, I figured it out. I have a set of similar clamps already. They're great, but on more than one occasion I found they don't open anywhere near far enough. This 3D printed version is much larger and exactly what I was looking for. Though the plastic is slippery, so adding two pieces of rubber will prevent movement of the clamped object. This tool is certainly my favorite so far. Next on the list is this port cleaning tool. I often find dust and lint to be the cause of charging issues with many devices. Typically, I use a pin or sim eject tool to remove any buildup inside the USB-C or lightning port. This 3D printed tool claims to do the same thing, only it's made from plastic and has a hook on one end to help retrieve grime. I tested it on my phone and found it was effective at removing some dust from my USB-C charge port, at least for a short period before breaking. The tool is much too thin, with its length also adding to its weakness. While I didn't completely snap it in two, if I had, it would only have made my charge port situation worse. I also attempted to use it to clean the speaker and microphone grills, comparing it to my usual approach, a simple brush. At first, it looks like a clear win for the 3D printed tool, that is, until I use an air blower to finish off the clean. Now, they're about the same. I reprinted a shorter and thicker version with greater success. It still fits in the port and is certainly stronger. While it works, it's not a long-lasting product, so I'll be sticking to using a pin or pair of thin tweezers to do the job. Despite the possibility of shorting the port out with a metal tool, I haven't had any issues using a metal tool. One tool I'm keen to try out is this iPhone display holder. I have an official Apple version of this tool, it's specific to each model and screen size, so you're expected to buy one for every device. I have also used a clamp, which plugs into the phone's charge port, although now that Apple switched over to USB-C, my clamp no longer supports the new models or any Android devices. This 3D printed version is universal, working with the iPhone 7 or later, and any Android phone like the Google Pixel that opens screen first. The thin base means the phone will not rock around when placed in the holder, making it more stable than some phones are on their own. However, the thin base of the stand has me wondering how long it will last. If knocked off a table or stood on, it's unlikely to survive. You may have noticed these two stands in my iPhone Air and 17 Pro teardown. Having now used them for an actual device, I can say they work. 
However, like the clamp, they need some grippy material stuck to the base to stop them sliding around, but that's an easy fix. Along with the clamp, I think this is also an item worth printing. The last tool I printed were these mini bit holders, specifically designed to let you access screws in hard to reach areas. Simply attach the bit and the plastic nib becomes the screwdriver. It's a nifty idea even if just for a niche use case. You're not going to get a lot of torque, so if it's a stubborn screw, you're still going to struggle to remove it. However, there is an L-shaped version aiming to solve this problem. Outside of hard to reach screws, it's very uncomfortable and tends to give your hand a cramp. So while I tried to use it to open and remove the screen from this iPhone 7, my fingers were in agony. This did provide the opportunity to test out the spudger. It does work even if the shape is a bit different to most off the shelf options. The durability was again lacking. I can't see this lasting as long as a store bought option and using it for more abrasive tasks such as scraping off old adhesive quickly wears out the tip, making it less effective at unplugging cables. In addition to the tools, I did try some organizers also, including this PIC storage tray. They're designed to fit into a larger storage system, allowing you to organize your tools and remove the sections you need. An organized workspace can be more efficient, Looking at some of the shots of my workbench while filming, you can see it's quite the mess. I do often lose picks or tools while working, so having even just a simple place to hold tools and bits mid-repair is a great idea. Hopefully preventing them from rolling off the table or getting lost behind pieces of plastic film or old parts. Overall, if you've got a 3D printer, printing repair tools can get you out of a predicament if you were to lose all of your spudges or picks. Or maybe you just need one for a simple one-off repair. I didn't find them all long-lasting with the settings and filament I used. The clamps were by far the best and most durable of the lot. The stand was also very useful. If you have a 3D printer and repair phones, I would recommend giving them a try. I think the power of the 3D printer will be in the fabrication of missing parts or to make new parts for custom builds. It might be an option to prototype a new tool, but I don't see myself making DIY sponges or picks. Retail options are cheap and much more durable. And on that note, this has been Hugh Jeffrey's video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.